So good evening, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience. And I am just going to adjust this so that it's as inobtrusive as possible. So it's November the 7th, 2019. The topic for tonight is clearing karma. Um, karma has been on my mind for, I would say, a while now. And the reason why is, um, I think because of, um, this is the period of time that we are, the, or at least I myself am, it's time to, to really clear a lot of the deep programming for myself. So, and some, of, some, some programs are easier to let go of than, than others. And um, so I've been thinking of how cal what karma plays into into this, and there are some things that for me is much easier to clear, whereas others that seem to be more deep rooted. And so it, I start to wonder why that is the case. And so the the topic of of karma starts to come up. And the first thing I want to um, get clear on is what is karma, because perhaps. Not everybody understands the same, um, I would say, karma. So let me just define the way I understand karma. You may or may not um, think of karma or know of karma exactly as, as I do. However, I just want to let all of you know where it is that I stand so that you can kind of make adjustments as to how that may or may not resonate with you. So what is karma? As far as I um, know, karma really is action. The, the, the word itself, karma, really means action. And I don't mean action as in um, any kind of action. It's, it's not, it does not really talk about action that is involuntary. It actually is about action that has intention behind it. So, for example... Um, let's say I, for example, last night I was on Franco's call last night and of all the things I, that I could be doing in the universe, I picked to spend um, the, the time of day between 8 to 10, 15 p.m. last night. I choose very consciously to um, spend the time with Franco and everybody that is on the call last night. So that for me is an action. So what is my intention behind it? My intention is, I like Franco, I, I resonate with his um, message, and I really like the community that he has created around himself. So my intention is really just to spend time with him and listen to his him talk and also spend time with everyone else that is within the community and so that's my intention and and that is the action so some of sometimes our action is good for example i think um most people would would um classify you know going on a, a consciousness call with franco is good karma it's good action Versus I could have, you know, last night I could have gone out to, let's say, rob a bank or, you know, push someone on, uh, on, the, on the, the, the pavement or do something stupid like that. Or, you know, go, go to a bar and drink 10 glasses of wine and get drunk and all that. I could have picked to do that, but I didn't. I picked to do what I did last night. So that is my karma. So that is that action is to build something good and karma is really a program now i'm not like when i say program i just mean that it is a um it is a thought process and a lot of people believe that karma there is good karma then there is bad karma and if you do good things then you create um it, good karma so that when you uh, create good karma then good things will come to you will come back to you what you put out is what you get back 
So when you do something bad, then bad things will happen to you. It may not happen to you right away. You may not get the, the pushback or the, the payback right away. Sometimes it may take five years or um, five lifetimes before you get what it is that you deserve. However, that's the idea is that good karma will bring you good experiences. You will have a good life if you do good things. And bad karma will, um, you would suffer because of that. So that's all within the belief system of karma. And so that's all the, the, it's within the thought form of what karma is, all within the program. So the program is not just good or bad. It's also the belief that good leads to good things happening to you and bad leads to bad things happening to you. And who is really doing the, the rewarding? Um, is there somebody out there, some, I don't know, cosmic being that's taking down? Like um, Santa Claus is, knows what you're doing and knows who's good and who's bad and would give you a present in, uh, at uh, Christmas time if you are good or give you a lump of coal if you have been a bad person. Is that what it is? No, not really. As far as I know, you or we, each of us ourselves, we are the one that's really doing the, the, the reward. We are the ones that keep track of everything that we do. And that actually is part of our, um, the way we are as a human being or even as a, uh, at a soul level is we're here to experience and everything that is that we have ever experienced from the time that we have first, um, our soul has first been created, we've been doing different things, experiencing, we have taken different lifetimes on different planets, and we have co-creations, um, all sorts of experiences with different aspects of ourselves. And Anything and everything that we ever done, said, comprehend, experience, it's all within, um, we, we have all kept that somewhere as a memory. So we are the ones that's actually keeping tabs on what we have done and also our intention behind it as well. Because we may, we may be doing something that is good. For example, let's say a, a doctor, um, a patient come in and the doctor healed, like did everything that, that he or she could to heal that person. So on the surface, that seems like it's a good deed. However, what if um, either knowingly or unknowingly that the, the patient is actually a monster, for example, is a serial killer and somehow they have a um, contracted an, an illness and because he, the, the, the patient got healed so he can actually, when he gets strong enough, he can go out and kill some more people. Now, did we say that the doctor actually created good karma or bad karma? Because it is, he, he, the, the doctor actually saved someone that's going to go out and create um, more suffering for other people. So there's a lot of things that, um, that's a lot of nuances in, in karma. And um, let's see, what else do I want to say about karma? Um, so what I actually want to emphasize is that karma, we are the ones that, know everything that we have done and we actually know what the consequences are as well even though we may not see um, the, 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 the fruits of our actions however it's somewhere already created everything that we've done is stored within our own energetic field and also collectively stored on the, and in the um, human collective as well. 
So all of those information, it's there. And that's part of um, being human is that we have this, this, we call it Akashic record. And it's, Akashic is that it is an energetic, it's an etheric record. It's not a record that, you know, there's, there's, there's no library that we can go in and pull out a book and say that, um, or pull out a physical book to say that this is what happened. However, energetically, we actually, if you um, really develop the skills, you can actually go and read and be able to get a sense of who did what and what happened because of that action. So there are people that can, um, through, their own, uh, through their own practice, be able to do all that. And so karma is a program, and as of 1987, karma is not part of our programming anymore. So when I say it's a program, it's that um, before 1987, everyone that was born um, having karma as one of the, the it's, it's like a, a preloaded program. Everyone knows that there's karma, and we keep tabs on that. And there's a change in 1987 in karma is no longer a part of our programming anymore. It doesn't mean that the people already who already have the, the, the programming would all of a sudden get a mind wipe. No, um, it's not that way. It is just that anyone that is new coming on the planet and new baby, it would not be something that is automatically loaded in their mind. However, they can still, if they want to, use karma as a, I would say, a growth um, tool if they feel like it, if their soul choose it. And some soul may want to choose it because they, they've seen how their parents, um, maybe their parents are Buddhists and they really emphasize and talk about karma and karma, 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 all of that in front of the, the child who has been born after 1987 and maybe they're so suddenly get um, very interested oh what is this karma thing i don't have it in my program and it sounds like it's such a juicy experience i'm gonna just you know pull that in and and um, have a go at it so that is still an option because we we are limitless so we can create anything we want. However, as a, um, as a baseline programming, karma is no longer loaded in to a, any human being that's born after 1987. And so why is that, why is, what is the, the, what's the change? How come karma is no longer, um, a default programming at birth. It's because in right around 1987, that's when we collectively as the human collective, all decided that we want to have a very, a more advanced playground. And so it's like we were in kindergarten and when we were in kindergarten, there are certain programs that we is already preloaded so that we um, we can play at one level however now that the, the the whole human collective decided to move to a more advanced playground and in this more advanced playground karma is no longer um, supportive it is actually limiting the, the ability of this new play, playground this new playground is actually, it's, um, it's the whole human collective wanting to go into fifth dimension. And fifth dimension is really just one step higher so that we um, get more of our sense of being the ultimate 
creator source. So we are actually getting closer and closer to understanding and actually exploring what being a the creator, the ultimate creator, or <clears throat> some would say God. Um, the, so different names for the same thing is that this new newer paradigm and newer playground it will support us to really get to know what our true nature is because our true nature is really the ultimate creator however it is all these different programs or, or different um, sandboxes that allows us to have experience different experiences that's very different from our true nature which is which is being the creative source now instead of just being at the king to cousin level as a, a whole human collective we decided to step it up more and so in this newer paradigm karma is no longer necessary and when karma is no longer necessary we can actually start to let go of karma even though the ones that you um, for example myself i was definitely born before 1987 way before 1987 so however because um karma is no longer something that is necessary i can actually by my own choice to start to let go of karma and not play with this idea of karma so how do we do that the the next question would be how can we do that how do we let go of karma because karma means that you whatever you do um it will come back at you however when you are a when you are closer one step closer to being the the creator there are several understanding that um kind of nulls and void all this idea of of karma because karma actually presupposes that we did something bad we did something bad so the idea of bad good and bad at a higher level that is very different the interpretation of what good and bad is is very different because there's nothing is bad it may um something that you do an action that you you've taken or is contemplating to to take to do may be considered bad at on some level however um it really all depends on the interpretation and when you when we get to the next level in the new paradigm one way of allowing us to be more um, closer to what our true nature is oneness comes into play is that we start to understand that whenever we do something it's not to someone else we actually everyone else is actually us is another aspect of us and when we really get that then there really is no um, i would say there's no need for karma because whatever you do you are just doing to yourself and when you truly understand what that means is then the the reason for doing um, a lot of the bad things or a lot of the things that most people would consider bad when you take that into consideration is that you are just doing it to yourself so you no longer have that motivation to hurt someone else because that someone else is just another aspect of you and when you truly embody that and when you really know that there is oneness and this oneness actually means that <clears throat> that the other person or um the other um entity whether it's a plant or an animal is just another aspect of you then there's really no 
motivation for you to do things that will harm another aspect of yourself. Of course, that also presupposes that we start to learn about what love is and how to really love ourselves and how to really get to the point where we love unconditionally. We don't need to have a reason. We don't need to um, think of why, because the, the reason is, let's say, I only love someone if, and whatever comes after that, the if, would be that reason. Yes, we don't, there's no longer, we don't need another reason. How everyone else is just us, then there really is no need for reason anymore. Everything that I do for someone else, I actually do for myself. And when we get to the point where we, um, of course, right now we're not at that level yet, or at least I'm not at that level yet. I don't know about you, all of you out there. Is, however, I do know that the it is my intention to get there one day when I have no idea. It really depends on how fast I learn and how fast I'm able to let go of the things that is holding me back. And one of the things is holding me back, it's really the, the idea of karma. Because karma it is, um, karma is, is really tied up with a memory because we all have many lifetimes before. And I'm absolutely sure that in past lifetimes, I must have done something wrong to someone else. And if there is no way I can um, let go of karma, then that means there's that this mark on my soul will always be there. And no matter how good or how much I improve myself, that mark will always be there. So then that kind of does not give me a lot of incentive to start to do good things because if the mark is always there, there's no way to let go of karma, then sooner or later that thing is going to come back and um, cause something bad for me. So how do we actually get out of uh, karma? How do we start to clear things up? It's really about letting go of the judgment. So I mentioned that karma is, has to tie up with memory because even though we may not consciously remember what happened in the previous lifetime, what I did to someone else or what someone else did to me, I don't consciously remember. However, the... the unconsciously that energy has been set up so that this lifetime when I let's say if somebody did something bad to me and when I see that person again then I may not consciously remember what it is that person did to me but at an unconscious level I would feel a sort of discomfort or distrust with the person and that actually set up um, the dynamics and the way to clear that so that I'll be able to just be with the person in this lifetime is to be present and really notice what comes up, what comes up when I'm with someone to actually be very present so that I am with that person here and now. I'm not actually um, reacting to something that that person has done to me I don't know how many lifetimes ago so when I all of a sudden have a um, uh, let's say all of a sudden I feel I don't like this person I have this distrust or uh, or um, frustration about this person is to really start to ask myself the question is is this coming from this lifetime is this because my I'm somehow picking up that this person has intentions that's um, not really very good for me, or is it because it's something that was long time ago? So when we start to become present, 
to just be with the person or the animal or the situation the way it is now and start to be the observer and start to observe what's going on and as things comes up and start to um, unravel so that I'm not recreating the same dynamics that was set up um, at a previous event that I'm actually creating the experience in with this person or with this animal or with this situation right here right now when I can consciously create it the way I want it okay, then you would start to be able to let go of karma karma will start to clear because you no longer are um, susceptible to the imprints of something that happened a long time ago. You'll be able to just sense what is right here, right now. And that is one of the ways is to, to start to disentangle yourself from karma as well. And also to start to let go of the other things is, um, for example, realize that you are the creator of your own ex experiences so that you don't have to, when things go wrong, you don't have to go into the, the vibration of poor me or why things happen to me. And you can actually start to become very focus on um, maintaining your own vibration and not be susceptible to guilt or victimhood and when you realize that oh um, I'm feeling this way I'm, I'm kind of acting like I, I feel like I'm being victimized and when you don't um, allow or, or I should say that you don't uh, succumb to being the victim when you start to realize that whatever the situation you can always find when you're present is to be able to find the best outcome when you're fully present then you don't have to play the victim anymore you don't have to allow whatever conversation that's in your head to pull your vibration down and when you're at a high vibration, when you are at the vibration that is your resident, your soul's resident or most um, representative of your soul's vibration at a high point, then the, the events that are of a lower vibration wouldn't be able to come to you anymore because like, even... So for example, let's say if you're high vibration, you actually don't get ill as often as when you're at a lower vibration. It's because the, the low vibration um, viruses or illness can't survive in a high vibration. So when you um, consistently maintain yourself at being a high vibration, then people that are of a lower vibration really don't resonate with you you just you just don't feel like um, interacting with them and illnesses or animals that are still vibrating at a lower vibration they're not interesting interested in you and there's very little connection because there are actually bands of vibration and when you're at a higher vibration then only people that are off similar vibration would be able to come and interact with you and when you interact with high vibration beings then you'll always be able to create experiences that are of a higher vibration for yourself and that really is how you can uh, start to let go of these karmic experiences that is rehashing a lower dimension, lower frequency 
that's been set up for a long time ago. So that is really what I have to say about Tama. Let's 